Son of Haranikashipu, 
text number 30. Mm -hmm. Shri Parada Uvacha, Shri Parada Uvacha, Paterna Krishna Parata Svata Uva, Paterna Krishna Parata Svata Uva, Mito Bibadhyaita Griham Pratanam, Mito Bibadhyaita Griham Pratanam, Adanda Gobir Visatam Tamisram, Adanda Gobir Visatam Tamisram, Puna Punas Charvita Charavanam, Puna Punas Shri Parada Uvacha, Shri Parada Uvacha, Materna Krishna Parata Svatova, Materna Krishna Parata Svatova, Mito Biba Yeta Griha Vitanam, Mito Biba Yeta Griha Vitanam, Adanta Gopir Visitam Timisram, Adanta Gopir Visitam Timisram, Puna Punas Charvida Charvananam, Puna Punas Charvida Materna Krishna Parata Svatova, Materna Krishna Parata Svatova, Mito Bibad Yeta Griham Britanam, Mito Bibad Yeta Griham Britanam, Adanta Gopir Visitam Tamisram, Adanta Gopir Visitam Tamisram, Punat Punas Chavita Charvananam, Prahlad Maharaj said, Mati, inclination, na, never, Krishna, unto Lord Krishna, Maratha, from the instructions of others, Swata, from their own understanding, Va, either, Mita, from combined effort, Abhibhadyaita is developed, Grihavritanam, a person is too addicted to materialistic bodily conception of life. Adanta, uncontrolled, Gobi, by the senses, Vishatam, entering, Tamisram, hellish life, Puna, again, again. Puna, Puna, again, again. Charvita, Char things already chewed, Charvananam, who are chewing. Hmm. Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Jirabhubad. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj replied, because of their uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to materialistic life make progress towards hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Their inclinations towards Krishna are never aroused, either by the instructions of others, by their own efforts, or by a combination of both. <clears throat> Purport. <clears throat> In this verse, the word Matirna Krishna refers to devotional service rendered to Krishna. 
so-called politicians, erudite scholars and philosophers who read Bhagavad Gita to try to twist some meaning from it to suit their own material purposes, purposes but their misunderstanding of Krishna will not yield them any profit. Because such politicians, philosophers and scholars are interested in using Bhagavad Gita as a vehicle for adjusting things materially, for them constant thought of Krishna or Krishna consciousness is impossible. Matirna Krishna. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 1855, Bhaktiamam Abhijanati. Only through devotional service can one understand Krishna as he is. The so-called politicians and scholars think of Krishna as fictitious. The politicians say that his, that his Krishna is different from the Krishna depicted in Bhagavad Gita. Even though he accepts Krishna and Rama as the supreme, he thinks of Rama and Krishna as impersonal because he has no idea of service to Krishna. Thus, his only business is puna punas charvita charvananam, chewing the chewed again and again. The aim of such politicians and academic scholars is to enjoy this material world whose only aim is to live comfortably, comfortably within the body of the, in the material world, cannot understand Krishna. The two expressions griha vrata and chavita chavananam indicate that a materialistic person try to enjoy sense gratification in different bodily forms, life after life, but is still unsatisfied. In the name of personalism, this ism or that ism, such persons always remain attached to the materialistic way of life, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.4.4. Bhogaisvaya prashaktanam taya prahita chaitasam vyavyasatmika buddhi samadona vidhiyate. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and materialistic opulence and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Those who are too attached to material enjoyment cannot be fixed in devotional service to the Lord. They cannot understand Bhagavan Krishna or his instructions, Bhagavad Gita. Adantir Gopir Visitam Tanimisram. Their path actually leads towards hellish life. As confirmed by Risha, as confirmed by Mrishabdev Mahatsevam Dwar Mahor Vimukte, one must try to understand Krishna by serving a devotee. The word mahat refers to a devotee. Mahatmanas tu mampartaham daiva prakritim asritaha vajantyananaya manaso gyatva bhutadim avyayam. O son of Pritha, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine energy. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead original and inexhaustible. A Mahatma is one who is constantly engaged in devotional service, 24 hours a day. As explained in the following verses, unless one adheres to such great personalities, one cannot understand Krishna. Rani Kashipu wanted to know where Prahlad had gotten this Krishna consciousness. Who had taught him? Prahlad sarcastically replied, My dear father, Persons like you never understand Krishna. One can understand Krishna only by serving a Mahat, a great soul. Those who try to adjust material conditions are said to be chewing the chewed. No one has been able to adjust material conditions, but life after life, generation after generation, people try and repeatedly fail. Unless one is properly trained by Mahat, or a Mahatma, or unalloyed devotee of the Lord, there is no possibility of one understanding Krishna and his devotional service. Om Agyan, Timirandasya, Gina, Jana, Salakaya, Chaksu, Unmilitam, Dina, Tasmai, Shri, Gurave, Namaha, Shri, Chaitanya, Manobistam, Stapditam, Dina, Bhutale, Swayam, Rupa, Gadamayam, Dadati, Swam, Padati, Kam, Dama, Om, Vishnu, Padaya, Krishna, Prasthaya, Bhutale, Shimakti, Bhakti, Vedanta, Swami, Tinamine, 
Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauda Vani Pacharya Nini Vishesha Shunya Vadi Pastyatya De Satarini Pancha Kaupatra Rubescha Kriva Sindhu Vebacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Sometimes people say, what happens if the whole world becomes Krishna consciousness, then what will happen? <laughs> Prabhupada said, that will never happen. <laughs> it's just not possible. There are persons who will never become Krishna conscious, no matter what happens. Life after life, and they continue to remain in the, what is called samsara, or the cycle of birth and death. Because in here, Prabhupada emphasizes one point continually, unless one takes shelter of one who knows Krishna, in other words, Krishna is pure representative, it's in a Prabhupada ends it, there is no possibility of understanding Krishna in devotional service. So this is fundamental to one's development in Krishna consciousness. One has to take shelter of Krishna's bona fide representative. And as Srila Rupa Goswami describes in Nectar of Devotion, one should follow the five principles in relationship to the spiritual master. That is, one should aspire for one, a guru. One should eventually become initiated by that spiritual master. One should inquire from him and, and, and engage in devotional service. And after some time, one should get, ask questions, how can I make continual progress in my devotional service? In other words, after one has initiation, it's not the end of the relationship. As Srila Prabhupada said, initiation means beginning. <laughs> beginning one's path back home, back to Godhead. And so the spiritual master remains prominent as the person, guide, what we say, indwelling guide and external manifestation of the indwelling guide, the super soul who has come in the form of Krishna's pure representative to take us back home, back to the spiritual world. And that's the goal of life, not to remain somehow or other comfortable in this material world. Prabhupada said, even if you want to be comfortable, he said, that's all right, but be Krishna conscious. <laughs> Sometimes he speaks in such a way that he says, you know, you can't become comfortable here. But somehow or other, if you want to become comfortable, all right, but be Krishna conscious. <laughs> not be comfortable conscious. That is not the program. <laughs> and so, but who can become comfortable in this material world when there's Janma Mitra Jara Vyadi, Dukkha Dosha Nadarshanam? Constantly there's Difficulties coming, adiyatmic, adibaltic, adidaivika, miseries of, per, uh, miseries of, you know, body and mind, miseries of the other living entities, which are so prominent in Kali Yuga, and miseries of higher powers, which are increasing more and more. So there's no comfort in this material world. Even in Prabhupada said, even, even the Queen of England, she has difficulties. <laughs> so... In other words, no matter who you are, no matter what, you know, political, social, or economic position you may be in, you're going to suffer in this world. That's just the way it is. And Krishna makes that point many times, and the Bhagavatam constantly makes that point, that this material world is just not a nice place. And so here, Pallad Maharaj, he has... Um, He's been sufficiently educated by his pure devotee spiritual master, Narada Muni. And he's compassionate. But he's telling his father, you know, you know Krishna is the goal of life, but still, you'll never become Krishna. <laughs> you're such a, a Surya Bhajya, Prabhupada said. You're the best of all demons. You'll never change. This is just the way you are. But still, Prabhupada Maharaj doesn't give up on him because he loves his father. He actually does. He has genuine love for his father. But still, he's, he realizes his father is a hopeless case. 
still would give him a chance anyway. <laughs> Let's try to save him anyway, even though he he can't understand anything. <laughs> he's over he's clouded with with arrogance. Out of these six uh, manifestations of Jaya and Vijaya, each one of them carries a particular type of quality that is outstanding, or what we say in anartha that is outstanding. We understand from the scriptures there are six anarthas, six main anarthas, uh, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy. And each one of these six uh, qualities is personified by one of the demons more than the rest. They all have all of them. But for each one, there's an outstanding one. And the one for Hrani Kashipu is arrogance, <laughs> pride. He can't understand that anybody, is there anybody, there's nobody better than me. Even when Lord Nisringadeva appeared from the pillar, he was thinking, oh, what's this? Some trick by the demigods? Who can destroy me? Uh, of course, he got a, a rude awakening. And later on, he got an, a heart operation, which was successful. The patient died, so that was the most successful operation. Now this is, you know, this is the, the nature of the demonic mentality. Or even today, in today's society, when people are somewhat situated, apparently, by nice material sit situations, somehow or other, um, you can't preach to them. You can't, you can't reach them. They, don't, they think there's nothing to learn on the spiritual level because they're successful. Sometimes you see that with people, even in, who are coming from the, uh, what we say, Vedic culture or from India, who are quite wealthy and have nice arrangements in their life for material enjoyment. Um, they, they worship God and they become pious and then they get a lot and then they think now and the purpose of worshiping God is no longer needed because I got everything I needed from God and therefore I might give him something once in a while. But still, now I have, I've, I've achieved the goal of life which is to enjoy this material world and I have all the facilities to do so. <laughs> and so you can't preach to these people. They think, well, yeah, I've heard it all. I grew up like that, but now I understand what is the real goal of life. And that's what they're preaching now in the Indian subcontinent. That for years, we have been, what we say, impoverished. We have wasted our time simply worshiping. And therefore, we have never developed the real goal of life, which is to have nice or mere material arrangements in our life. And therefore, now is the time to really get on track. And so getting away from their culture, from their tradition, from their heritage, and they're chasing after the Western ideals in terms of, you know, trying to somehow or other uh, see where not only do we want to be materially advanced, we want to be better than the, than the materially advanced societies now. So it's like that. They do something great, we're going to do it better. That's the mood there. You'll see that. And so this is, the, this is the problem, that material life is like a form of intoxication. Just like when a person is intoxicated, he can't, sometimes he can't even remember who he is or where he, he was or where, or where he is or where he was. Sometimes they even forget their own name, they get so intoxicated. So material life is a form of intoxication. Uh, what is, what is material life trying to enjoy the senses in various types of ways? And of course, there's unlimited ways that people think of to enjoy the senses. And if they get tired of the ways they already enjoy, they come up with new ones. <laughs> there was that one stupid way people were trying to enjoy their senses. I think they pretty much gave up on it now. It's called bungee jumping. You've seen that? Bungee jumping? Yeah. They tie you with this big giant elastic band, <laughs> it looks like. And it's a big, you know, like, I don't know what it is, like a stretch type of rope. And then they drop you from a high crane and you fall, free fall, with this thing around your waist. And just before you, 
you come close to the ground and you bounce up and down like that and and it's like I remember I was watching television I was watching the news and one reporter he had to report about what was that about so he decided to try it so he could give the perfect report and his report was really amazing he said this was the most stupidest thing I have ever done <laughs> He said, I, I'll, I, he couldn't give a really, you know, objective report. He was just criticizing the whole thing. <laughs> I don't think he, he had much of a job after that. <laughs> but anyway, because of his, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sensibility, his name was, you know, his name was, his name was Mr., Sh uh, what was his name? His name was Sringha, Sringha, yeah, Sringha, Sringha. He was an American too. He had a name like Sringha, which means lion. <laughs> so that was quite ironic. So this is uh, this is material life. If 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 you get tired of one particular type of sense enjoyment, then you try for another one. It's like Prabhupada says, you know, people think, well, I have this nice wife at home, but I have to go to the club enjoy these other ladies. And Prabhupada said it's all the same, whether you put it in a, a golden pot or you put it in an iron pot or you put it on a paper plate, it's the same thing. <laughs> but they think, well, we have to try to enjoy it another way because it's different and it's better. And therefore, Prabhupada said, you see, he was referring to in France, when he was in France, these old men are going to the clubs he was saying, paying $50, and in those days, $50 was a good chunk. That was about, you know, 50 years ago. And, you know, seeing these dancing girls and getting intoxicated, and they think, oh, now we're really enjoying. <laughs> so even at the fag end of life, people can't give up material sense gratification. Uh, Prabhupada tells that one story of... Um, King Akbar and his uh, servant Birbal. You know, Akbar, he's kind of, he's, he's kind of contemplating, he's making some conjectures. He said, I think when this, uh, you know, this, uh, when you get old, this sex desire, it kind of leaves you. Birbal says, no. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> and he said, well, all right, well, let's make him an experiment, okay. You uh, actually, you have this very dedicated and loyal follower. He's now in the hospital, or he's in sick, and he's laying there in his bed. He's very old. He's practically on the, you know, the edge of death. You come and see him, but you bring your daughter with him, with you, and just go in to the man's room with your daughter. And the daughter was quite attractive. So the king went in, I mean, yeah, King Akbar went in, and, and then Birbal said, watch his eyes when you walk in. So he walks in, and the man, the old man, there's his, you know, his king, immediately his eyes goes to the lady. <laughs> then he could understand. Even when you, when the machine doesn't work anymore, <laughs> the desire is still there. The desire remains, and sometimes it even gets stronger as time goes on. So this material world is like that. So unless one seriously takes shelter of devotional service, even in the practice of devotional service, we have to understand that this material world is very, very polluting. It's very, very difficult to free oneself from any tendencies for material enjoyment. Therefore, one has to be very, very fixed in devotional service. Fixed means that we chant our rounds very carefully every day with attention, with devotion. We read Srimad Bhagavatam and study. Prabhupada said these are the two main activities. And also to associate very carefully and in the right mood with devotees. In that way, we can remain fixed in our Krishna consciousness. Because no one can stop the force of material desires, but you can replace that force or diminish the power of that force by awakening true spiritual desires. Well, that is the process in devotional service. Otherwise, material life is very, very 
very, what we say, subtle, insidious, hard to understand. And sometimes we say, and it's often said, that the more you make advancement in devotional service, the more you realize how contaminated you are. We used to remember the old days in Krishna consciousness when somebody would come, new per person, and they'd be engaged in devotional service, and they'd really get fired up, and they'd be doing their service so nicely, attending all the programs and doing everything in the best possible way. And after one year, they would think, yeah, I got it. I made it. I'm a pure devotee. We used to call it PDS, pure devotee syndrome. <laughs> And then after the second year, it was a little different. <laughs> so, you know, this is how, you know, devotional service is very powerful, but it's a process. Jai Pancha Tattva Ki Jai, Sisi Golden It's a process. It's a process that takes, you know, very careful execution of the principles of devotional service constantly. And that way, Maya cannot touch you. Maya's, oh, Prabhupada said, Maya, and there's one verse, I can't remember it, maybe Maharaj knows, Prabhupada quotes it. Maya's right, Maya's everywhere, but Krishna's in front. I don't know if you remember that. I think it's Bhakti Thakur's verse. Yeah, that's it. It's Japati Adare, yeah. That if you look left, there's Maya. You look right, there's Maya. You look up, there's Maya. You look down, and Maya. But look straight, Krishna's there. <laughs> so you have to keep your mind focused on Krishna, and in the activities of devotional service. And that way, you'll never be touched by Maya. And whatever material desires you have, just how do you get rid of material desires? Prabhupada gave a nice example in his own life when he was in. Um, India, he was in Delhi, I believe, and he had given a very powerful lecture. Many of the Delhi, what we say, uh, government leaders were there, and they had come to see Prabhupada speak. They were invited. And so, at the end, one of them came up, big minister, and he fed full dandavats, full dandavats, at Prabhupada's lotus feet. Full. And... Uh, Devotees, you know, they were Americans, you know, Europeans, never saw, wow, bro, look at that man, he's such an important person, how much, he's really appreciating Srila Prabhupada. So later on, when Prabhupada was driving back to his, uh, you know, place where he was staying, the devotees asked, Prabhupada, what is it about you that causes, you know, per persons like that to act? Prabhupada said, I have no lust. <laughs> and that's all he said. And then everyone was quiet. Everybody was thinking, oh my God, I must, I'm very lusty. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so after some time, they reached Prabhupada's place. And Prabhupada could understand the devotees were thinking about what he said. And so he turned around and said, it's not because I have no lust. It's because I have no time. <laughs> So what he was saying, don't give any time to Maya. <laughs> That's all. That's the formula for success. Just don't give any time to Maya. That's all. Just stay. Use your, use your time always for Krishna. And then you'll be fixed in devotional service. That is, the, that is our goal, is to use as much, whatever time available in Krishna consciousness. Then it becomes what we say more natural and what we say more easy to make progress in devotional service. There's another story how another, Prabhupada was in another place, I think it was India again, and after giving a lecture, one very distinguished, very nice gentleman, obviously very cultured, well-dressed, along with his lovely wife, they came to meet Prabhupada. And the man said to Prabhupada, uh, Swamiji, please give me your blessings. Prabhupada looked at him and said, you don't want my blessings. <laughs> and the man said, no, no, Swamiji, please, please, please give blessings. Prabhupada said, you don't want my blessings. <laughs> 
And the man asked for a third time. Prabhupada said, all right, I bless you, your material life is finished. <laughs> <laughs> and as it was described, he, him and his wife just drifted back into the crowd and that was it. <laughs> So you probably could understand that here's a person that just doesn't want to give up, will not give up his material attachments. So why, you know, why, you know, why give him that, you know, because he can't do it anyway, so he won't do it even if you say it. So better to tell him to chant Hare Krishna, <laughs> like that. So the, yeah, so this kind of kind of illustrates or patterns what's here that there are people who will never take to Krishna consciousness in a serious way, but still we preach. But Prabhupada said if we can make ten percent of the world's population Krishna conscious, then that is a grand success, and then many other people will also follow that ten percent and like that. But of course, we're always thinking as many as possible. So Prahlad Maharaj, he's the best preacher. He has hope that his father will someday change, although he knows he won't <laughs> at the same time. So this is Prahlad Maharaj. And, and Prabhupada, when he would speak about Prahlad Maharaj, sometimes he would cry, just talking about Prahlad Maharaj. How compassionate Prahlad Maharaj was. And how fixed in, in loving Krishna he was. He never had any enmity towards anyone. And he was harassed by his father, by his father's, you know, soldiers and servants. So many. There's one story that's not mentioned in the, uh, in the uh, Bhagavatam. It's in the Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. Please read that if you can get a chance to get a copy of Hari Bhakti Sudodaya. It's a hundred pages. Fifty pages is the, is the life of Dhruva Maharaj and fifty pages is the life of Prahlad Maharaj. In that Shastra, there's one form of torture that's not mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Where uh, Harani Kashipu gets these Brahmins to put curses on Prahlad Maharaj. And there's tantric curses to kill him. But Prahlad Maharaj says, you know, he's kind of like just fixed in Krishna. So the curses are not doing anything. But one thing is happening, because when you curse someone, that curse has to go somewhere. <laughs> Be careful of this one. <laughs> and so if that person is powerful, that curse will go back to the person who curses. <laughs> so the brahmanas they were feeling the pain or the, the effects of their own attempt to curse Malad Maharaj and they were dying actually because of that. And what did they do? Prahlad, save us. <laughs> they went to Prahlad and said, Prahlad, you know, we can't kill you but now we're dying. <laughs> and Prahlad said, all right. So Prahlad was very compassionate and somehow by his spiritual power he withdrew the curse, curses. And they were free. This is Prahlad Maharaj. I mean, he could have thought, oh, you're trying to kill me? Well, uh, you know, too bad. <laughs> but that was, Prahlad Maharaj wasn't like that. He was just so compassionate and so loving and so caring. Prabhupada said, people will make us an enemy, but we shouldn't make, we shouldn't make our enemies our enemy. He said, this is a Vaishnav. He doesn't have any enemies although people may try to make us enemies. We avoid people like that, but at the same time, we wish them well that they someday they will become somewhat changed in their attitude. Okay, Is, if there's any questions or comments on anything. Yes, uh, Ari. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. You, you mentioned uh, that we, we should always keep Krishna in front and uh, give no time uh, to Maya. Uh, and um, I'm sure many of us have seen devotees who have taken themselves to this effort 
and uh, they have filled their days with uh, something that seems Krishna conscious. They have been reading seeing devotees with a stopwatch. They marked how much they read, how much they like everything. It nice. was on a very very tight schedule, like second to second. But I'm sure you have also seen that, uh, that there are some devotees like this who, uh, after some time, burn out or I don't know something happens to them. They 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 become so dry, despite mm, yeah. the efforts. That I know even some of them left completely. Mm -hmm. uh, how? Why does it happen? Don't they f fill their time with Krishna consciousness? Mm -hmm. what, what is the problem? The well. Sometimes we use this little analogy. If you're trying to play a guitar and you're tuning the guitar, if you tune the strings too tight and you play it, you could break them. And if the strings are too loose, there's not much sound. <laughs> so there we have to find that proper tuning. Your question is a good question because we find it's, it's necessary to understand that uh, that rigidity uh, should be understood in terms of getting proper instructions on how to execute one's devotional service from others. We can be, you can't charge the gates of heaven as sometimes they say. You know. And some devotees think, well, you know, I'm just going to go for it. But that's nice, but it has to be done in the right way, because it's both the execution and the mood. Yeah. Krishna is attracted by our bhakti, and of course, if we follow the instructions of the spiritual master in execution of devotional service, that's an exhibition or an indication of bhakti by carefully following the instructions. But we should learn how to, that, that's where there's the word niyamagraha, you know, following rules and regulations for the sake of following and not knowing why. They, and then there's niya magraha, or acting independently and whimsically and not adhering to the directions of Shastra and Guru. So there has to be a balance there. And so if you're balanced one way or imbalanced one way or the other, part of our process of devotional service is to be very... Uh, reflective and see, you know, am I actually making an advancement or am I too rigid? Am I too loose? Am I too rigid? What do I need to do? Uh, Bhakti Tirtha Swami made a nice prayer which he made in front of the, G, the whole GBC body one year and he asked everyone to follow this prayer and the prayer is beautiful. I have it sitting on my desk it says, my dear Lord, whatever it's needed for me to make advancement in devotional service, bring that on. And my dear Lord, whatever I don't need in, in, the, in my devotional service, please take that away. That's kind of an incomplete prayer that you're asking for what is necessary and what is unnecessary, like that. So, and, I mean, devotional service, we have to learn how to practice it. It doesn't come automatically. We make mistakes, we go one side or the other. So, um, but we have to be somewhat introspective to see. And association with devotees really helps us. Because if you're too rigid, you know, devotees will see that. And if you're too loose, devotees will see that also. <laughs> like that. So, I don't know if it's somewhat of a broad answer, but anything else? Anyone else? Yes, okay. Thank you. It keep me alive up here. <laughs> um, I, 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 was, uh, I actually have two more questions. <laughs> That's all? <laughs> um, one is uh, the pure devotee syndrome. No, this is I was talking to my Vardhan Pradeshka Guru. His idea was that in two years he will become pure devotee. Who? Who said that? Tota Gopinath from Germany. Tota Gopinath? Yes, from Germany. From where? He's, we were in the university together. He's oh. Sort of 
and uh, yeah, a pure, de pure devotee syndrome that we will, if not charge the gates of heaven, at least will become uh, perfect, quick, fast, very soon. Well, it's our, that's our philosophy also. The Prabhupada said it can take one second or it can take millions of lifetimes. <laughs> My question is about Spanish um, Tamrita uh, mostly, and uh, maybe some of the writings of Bhakti Nantako. Uh, there you can mostly see, like Jagad Dharma or Spanish Tamrita, somebody decides to become a devotee, and then uh, sometimes it literally says, says uh, a few days, and sometimes it's just looking as if it takes a few days. Somebody, somebody meets the devotees, uh, becomes inspired, and then just a, a little time down the road, the road and he's in total ecstasy and everything is yeah. perfect. Well, there's one factor there that was there that, and that then that is not there now. <laughs> and this is also mentioned. When Lord Chaitanya was there, he speeded up the process of bhakti and he also speeded up the process of offenses. People got the reactions of their offenses right away, and they got the, the merits of their devotional execution right away. That was by the grace of Mahababhu's personal presence. And that's mentioned, I think, in either Chaitanya Mangala or Chaitanya Bhagavan. So as you see that with the negative side, you know, Gopal Chapala, when he committed offense to Srivas Thakur, immediately got, you know, Joe Paul Chakravarti with Naratam da, uh, with uh, with uh, Haridas Thakur immediately, and if someone did something outstanding, you know they were in ecstasy, as you mentioned, like that. That was the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like that, huh? Ramachandra Khan, yeah, and yeah, Moga, so many. So yeah. That was a special feature of Mahabhu, Mahababhu's personal presence. <laughs> in Jaya What does it say there in terms? Well, like this uh, Vaishnava does. He got initiation and in, in, he chanted for a few days and then... <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, you want to change your name to Vaishnava Das? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because I have to speak today on, on some, you know, some devotees in Toronto. <laughs> and they asked me, they gave me a topic. The light at the end of the tunnel. This is the topic that I have to speak on. <laughs> so I don't know how long that tunnel is. <laughs> I know there's a light there, but... <laughs> I don't know how long the tunnel is. For some people, the tunnel is quite long. <laughs> but that's also, there is an indication of that. I mean, we're just using philosophical speculation now. That people from previous births, when they come to the Krishna consciousness immediately, it's like the wood is dry. When the wood is dry, it ignites. And for others, this may be their first lifetime, and therefore it may take some time. So that way we can't really judge devotees in an absolute way. We have to understand that there's more to it than how people make advancement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has, that, has that helped a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of time. I don't know about the rest of them. <laughs> toward Krishna are never aroused either by the instructions of others in right. their own efforts or by a combination of both. Right. So I was always, uh, for decades now, curious uh, why instructions of others and a combination of both. So a combination of both seems to be like they manifest a certain interest and but, somebody seems but, but uses the word assembly in reference to that combination. Even in, the, even in an assembly, he says. 
So why isn't this our philosophy that if we go to devotees, then uh, uh, there's hope as long as there are devotees. We, we have manifest some desire and there are devotees, then there's hope of uh, getting mercy. But this seem, seems to deny that, that the combination of one's effort and the and, uh, uh, instruction of instructions of others still well, that's for certain persons who are just, you know, what they say. As the verse was there, Bogaisvaya Prashaktanam Nachetasam. That verse, those who are too much inclined to material life. Too much. The word too much is there. So what is too much? In other words, they are enamored by material life and they can't give up the desire to try to somehow or other manipulate the material energy for their own material enjoyment. So too much, yeah, sometimes we, the word too much, of course too much is a relative term, but for some people it's what it is, too much. <laughs> and for others who have an inclination towards Krishna consciousness and still are attached to material life, there's hope for them if they follow the process carefully and uh, uh, don't look towards material life for, you know, happiness. Yeah, so it's uh, too much is there. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, Prabhupada was talking to one couple and uh, he was no, I wasn't wasn't proud, but it was actually Ridayananda Maharaj in South America. He was talking, he was preaching to one couple, very distinguished couple, intelligent, somewhat wealthy, and he was saying, "You, you know, you're a soul. You're a soul." He was trying to indicate that you are not this body; you're a soul. And the lady responded, "Yes, I know that. My husband, he's a male soul, and I'm a female soul." <laughs> She couldn't get away from the con conception of bodily uh, identification, even in terms of spiritual identity. You know, so How people are like that. They, they, they. What we say? What's the word? Superimpose material ideas on spiritual principles, spiritual philosophy, and therefore they they don't understand. Okay, so thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>